It is a crime that Chicago police call sickening, and it is. And I think we can all agree with them on that. An 18-year-old white man beaten by four teenage black suspects shouting anti-Trump slurs. The whole thing broadcast on Facebook Live. And I must warn you, uh, this is very disturbing to watch. Donald Trump. White people, boy. Look, I think that there has been a dramatic rise in racial tension under President Obama uh, and under the former Attorney General. I think a lot of their language, a lot of their approach uh, heightened that sense of racial tension. And uh, I think we have to oppose white racism. We also have to oppose black racism. And I think if this had been done to an African-American by four whites, uh, every liberal in the country would be outraged. And there'd be no question but that it's a hate crime. We are right at the edge of a terrible period, uh, which I know President-elect uh, Donald Trump wants to avoid, of having uh, the deep, bitter division uh, in, in the communities in a way that makes America very hard to govern. But look at Chicago. Yeah. There have been four, nearly 4,000 people shot in Chicago with no effective response from Governor Rahm Emanuel, no effective response from President Obama. Uh, and I think people feel that they're really alienated from their government and have no one to turn to. And you end up in this kind of a uh, really destructive and I think frightening kind of development. In the structure that they have in place is that any user can report a video, even live as it's going on. And there is a staff of people, I'm told, who will check that video against the policy. I think that's probably the best they can do, uh, given that video and so much video now across not only Facebook but also other platforms is live. It is a story we first broke here on Fox 32 News, and tonight there is breaking information on the victim of a torture case broadcast live on Facebook. Yeah, Vinny, it's a case out of Chicago, but it's the number one trending topic on Twitter here in Atlanta right now, and we want to warn you, the video, the details of what happened are shocking and very upsetting. Donald Trump, the fuck white people, what? The fuck white people, what? Goofy. Go! <laughs> Many people took to Facebook outraged, wondering whether this will be considered a hate crime. But I think some of it is just stupidity. You know, people just ranting about something that they think might make a headline. I don't think that uh, at this point we don't have anything concrete. Fuck Donald Trump! The fuck white people, what? That certainly will be part of whether or not a hate crime is, uh, if we seek a hate crime, um, to determine whether or not this is sincere or just stupid ranting and reading. Donald Trump! Donald Trump! Donald Trump! Oh my brother Green, I never... I should knock your ass out right now. Stand up, boy. Stand up, boy. Stand up, boy. You better figure it out. Watch out, Let me see. Ooh, that bitch is gone. Hey, is he is he leaking, bro? So this is absolutely sickening, but I'm going to say something that's probably not very popular. We cannot callously go about classifying things as a hate crime. Motive here matters. What I heard is both people on both sides should just cut it all out. And a hate crime is not the same thing as protesting. We have to be very deliberate about it. And that. what do you say what do you say to the people who are who dragged a poor white guy out of a car and beat him? Oh my goodness, poor white people, please, oh my stop. Yo ass, bro. Now that's your blood. Bro. Not take it. Oh, watch out, bro. Watch out, bro. This is an ugly, your bro, Cut this shit up. No, cut this shit up. Quiet. No, cut this shit up. Bro. Hey, cut this off. I'm gonna make your ass walk on blood ass. What's going on, baby? I just want to remind folks that we cannot sit here and ignore that for, at least for the last year, on very public display, um, the worst parts of America have been brought from the fringe into the mainstream. So that affects people on both sides. We've talked about white nationalists and white supremacists and the KKK, but 
There are also, this, when this inflammatory rhetoric is out there, when someone is repeatedly telling you that your community is the worst of the worst, um, it brings out the worst of the worst in people. Police believe he went willingly initially, but that is clearly not the case based on three videos posted to social media. What you are about to see is disturbing. At one point, the victim is held at knife point and told to curse President-elect Donald Trump. The men can be heard saying they want this to go viral. Another video shows the group forcing the victim to drink water from a toilet. Throughout these videos, the victim is kicked, hit, and cut. Police believe he was released after being held anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. Officers found him walking along Lexington and Homan on the west side. You know, Don, I mean, at, at the, the end of the day, um, you just try to wrap your head around evil. That's what this is. It's evil, it's, it's brutality, it's man's inhumanity to man. And um, for I, I don't think it's evil. I, I, I don't think it's evil. I think these are young people and I think they have bad home training. Donald Trump. What the fuck? What? 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 Go. <laughs> really, what we're talking about is. If, there were, if they succeeded in, in changing the results of an election, which none of us believe they were, uh, that, that would have to constitute an, an attack on the United States of America because of the effects if they had succeeded. Would, would you agree with that? Uh, first, we cannot say, they, they did not change any uh, vote tallies or, or any, anything of that sort. Yeah, I'm just uh, talking and we have about no, it. We have no way of gauging uh, the impact that certainly the intelligence community can't gauge the impact it had on uh, choices the electorate made. There's no way to, for us to gauge that. Uh, whether or not that constitutes uh, an act of war, I think, is a very heavy policy call uh, that uh, I don't believe the intelligence community should make, but it uh, certainly a, a, would carry, in my view, great gravity. A Los Angeles City Council member has proposed a law to ban adults who are by themselves from public playgrounds.
Heavy snow has pounded a number of western states, closing roads in Northern California and the Sierra Nevada, and making driving dangerous in Utah. In Oregon, strong winds toppled a tree into a home in the town of Otis, killing an eight-year-old girl. We can't predict things like this and when that's going to happen. The snow is closing some roads and making others in states like Utah very tough to drive. Two feet of snow has already fallen in the Lake Tahoe region, with a foot more expected in the higher elevations. All major Sierra passes were closed on Wednesday night, including a 50-mile stretch of Interstate 80. Workers plan to trigger man-made avalanches along Nevada's Mount Rose Highway and plow it before reopening it to traffic late Wednesday or Thursday. Flash flood watches were issued for most of this Sierra along the Nevada-California line with heavy rain expected later in the week. Companies large and small are at CES in Las Vegas this week to unveil the latest developments in consumer technology. This year, it's about artificial intelligence. There are robots that respond to touch and voice commands. There is a thin wallpaper television slightly thicker than a nickel. Companies are embedding computer chips that connect to other devices and the internet that learn the user's habits in everything from walking canes, mouth guards for youth football players, even in bowls that allow users to remotely feed their pets. Baby steps these companies hope will turn into big leaps for daily life. For years, we've been told our universe is the result of the Big Bang Theory, but the question some scientists are asking now is what came 
before the Big Bang. From starting out as a small singularity to expanding over billions of years and eventually a cosmic cataclysm, the Big Bang theory is the leading explanation as to how the universe began. The scientific theory has been around since the early 1940s, but according to physicist Ethan Siegel, who is also a contributor to Forbes magazine, believes the Big Bang theory was actually the result of a black hole. Now, this new theory originated about four years ago when three other physicists pitched the idea. Since then, this theory has not been able to be proven false despite challenging opposition. Now, let's take a look at the evidence pointing to this theory, starting with singularity. Now, according to Siegel, this is a point where infinite density grows when space-time reaches it. Singularity has only occurred twice in the universe, the Big Bang and black holes. In black holes, this point exists in the event horizon, which is described as a boundary in which no light or other radiation can escape. Now, in layman's terms, it's the point of no return. This event horizon is apparently much bigger than what the particles in it can hold. According to Siegel, black hole's event horizon is a repetition of the three-dimensional universe we currently live in. 800,000 ducks and geese will be culled in France under measures to halt the spread of bird flu. So far, 89 French cases of the H5N8 virus have been reported in a country with the largest poultry flock in Europe. Three departments in the southwest are affected, a region famed around the globe for its foie gras. Avian influenza has spread rapidly through the migration of wild birds. Over 10 other European countries have had cases of H5N8 since the first reported death in Hungary last October. There are outbreaks in Asia too. However, the virus is not currently thought to pose a significant threat to human health. Egg prices have nearly doubled in South Korea since November's outbreak of the bird flu. That's because egg supplies have dwindled since the country put down more than 30 million birds, mostly chickens, to curb the outbreak. The government has removed import duties on eggs and seven other related products to meet domestic demand. In the battle to fight the Zika virus, one primary strategy has been to eliminate the Aedes aegypti species of mosquitoes that spreads it. But that's become ever more challenging as the mosquitoes develop resistance to insecticides that have been widely used to fight the adult insects for about 60 years. Such chemicals are needed to kill mosquitoes that carry not only Zika, but also yellow fever, dengue fever, and chikungunya. In general, insecticides used to kill adult mosquitoes fall into one of two classes, pyrethroids and organophosphates. The pyrethroid category of insecticide is especially valuable because it's inexpensive to produce and cheaper to use because low doses can kill mosquitoes quickly, all while being non-toxic to humans. That made it all the more alarming when researchers at the University of Florida's Medical Entomology Lab recently found that every Aedes aegypti they had tested since summer 2016 was resistant to pyrethroids. Some Florida public health officials turned to NALID, an organophosphate, to help prevent the spread of Zika during the summer of 2016, but some residents and elected officials raised concerns about its safety. Amid the thinning arsenal of effective insecticides, industry and mosquito control experts worry it could grow even smaller if new reviews by the Environmental Protection Agency lead to requirements for costly new studies on their environmental and health effects. Developing a new chemical insecticide and securing regulatory approvals can cost more than $250 million and already can take nearly a decade, according to agrochemical consultancy 
Phillips McDougall. Some chemical makers have shelved products due to the high cost of regulator-required studies. Other manufacturers are looking for new ways to deploy chemicals already in use, such as Spinosad, which targets mosquito larvae. For example, Chicago-based Clark produces an insecticide in tablet form to drop into storm drains and gutters that typical sprayers can't reach. Still, experts such as those behind UK-based public-private partnership Innovative Vector Control Consortium are scouring companies' libraries of chemical compounds, a project that aims to concoct new insecticide classes that could be rotated regularly to avoid the development of resistance. Working with companies including Bayer AG and Syngenta AG, the IVCC aims to bring three completely new insecticides to the market between 2020 and 2025. Closed circuit television never captures sound, but even mute, you get the idea. Phone cameras in apartment blocks all over the port city of Izmir captured the immediate aftermath from a variety of perspectives. It was a car bomb outside a courthouse, with many casualties and a great deal of panic as bystanders fled the scene. In the shootout that followed, two suspects were killed, graphic pictures of their bodies posted on the internet. Why did this happen here? Was it a coincidence that overnight, more than a dozen people in Izmir had been arrested in connection with the massacre in the Reina nightclub in Istanbul on New Year's Eve? Perhaps it was, since the governor of Izmir said immediately after the car bomb that their suspicions were resting not on ISIL, but on a cell of the Kurdish PKK. But all the same, it complicates things still further for the Turkish authorities. Many of those arrested in Izmir were Uyghurs from the persecuted Muslim community of Western China. None, however, was the gunman, and the Turkish authorities don't even know if he's still in the country. But in an interview, one of the country's deputy prime ministers suggested they believe the gunman is also a Uyghur, extremely well trained in violence. When we watch all the videos, it seemed that this is a very sophisticated incident. It's understood that this plan was well studied. What I can tell you for the moment is that our security forces identified the terrorist. His probable whereabouts also established. All of it demonstrates how Turkey's three-way war with the Kurds and ISIL is being fought out, not only in Syria and Iraq, but its own cities. Izmir is best known as being the exit point from Turkey for refugees fleeing to Greece in rubber boats.